And right here, it'll say for control of leaf miners, mites, and suppression of aphids, white flies, thrips, or on ornamental plants. I kind of go right to this part because it says it's for ornamental plants. And ornamental plants are plants that um, we don't consume. So, because you're traditionally, your chemical products are going to either mess up the digestive, the reproductive, or the nervous system. So, this one actually penetrates the pest nerve receptors, paralysis sets them with hours, and pests are no longer able to feed. So, Okay, we have a pesticide, like we got to up our game toward pesticides and fungicides. They can't just be something that kills or takes care of the problem. It also has to be a help recover the plant back to its uh, healthy state again. You know, something also always makes me kind of scared is, okay, if this goes into the plant, if it readily, like this is readily absorbed into the plant, well then, does that mean it's readily absorbed on my skin? Have you ever used Avid as a pesticide? Well, in this video, we're going to get into it. You're here with Mark Botwell and Holt Crowley on Perfect Gardens TV. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and check us out on Instagram and Facebook. If you haven't seen our $2.99 membership, please make sure to hit the join button down below in the description. If you need a little more one-on-one, -on -one, we also have our VIP link down below. All right, let's get into it, guys. Make sure to hit the join button on the bottom of every video. So Holt, thank you so much once again for coming back on the channel and talking about another miticide insecticide. The one that we'll be covering today is Avid. Will you please just tell us a little bit about the product and sure. the, the benefits, the, the pros, the cons, what it's all about and what they, yeah, talk, talk to us about the product, please. Sure, absolutely. Uh, and Mark, thanks for having me on your channel again. I, I do enjoy these things. I, I've been studying this type of stuff for eight, nine years now. Um, and that anybody even wants to hear about it, uh, I find fascinating. So I'm glad that uh, you do. And hopefully your uh, viewers will, will get a lot of uh, good information about it. And I do encourage them not to just listen to what I say or you say, but to do their own um, inspection, do their own research and, and do a deeper dive just so that they're very aware of what they're putting on their plants because what they put on their plants eventually goes into them. If it doesn't go into them, it eventually goes into the environment. So those are always things to uh, be considerate of as I know we're trying to have a more healthy uh, world out there. So on Avid, uh, Avid is um, basically is an insecticide miticide. And right here, it'll say for control of leaf miners, mites and suppression of aphids, white flies, thrips on ornamental plants. I kind of go right to this part because it says it's for ornamental plants. And ornamental plants are plants that um, we don't consume. So your your mom's roses, you know, the trees, the the pine trees, whatever they are, something that you're not going to ingest or smoke or or put in your body in some form or fashion. So right off the bat, Avid has been around for quite some time. And I know back in the early days of uh, cannabis face rolling out, a lot of people used Avid uh, because back in those days, the material, the end results or the end product from cannabis things were not being tested uh, the way they are now. Now they're, they're more tested than probably our food products for any type of contaminants left in them. So one of the things with Avid, is it effective? Um, it, it must be, it's been around for quite some time, but just because it's effective on a plant, kill a bug does not mean that it's safe for you to consume or smoke or, or, or eat in any way or even get on your skin. So that's just something I want people to be aware of because they think, oh, it worked and, and people forget. Uh, like if you went and got an x-ray, x-ray uh, may be safe one time or something, but you know, a, a prolonged exposure can give you uh, cancer and you don't even know it just from, from the radiation poisoning. So just as an example, to always be aware of that. But this one is designed for ornamental. So we'll, we'll kind of go down that path. It has some warning advisors on here. I've read down and in, in it's, it's made by a company called uh, Syngenta, which is makes a bunch of other different products too. Now, it does have some precautionary statements, and we, we'll go to the SDS here in a second, but it just wants you to wear coveralls over anything short. So basically, you don't want to get it on your skin is one of the things, or on your hands. So it's not skin safe, which also kind of tells me, or eye safe either, um, which also tells me that there's going to be a time, I'm not sure if I have it stored on this particular page, but there's for a certain time period, you don't want uh, it to you know get on you know, be around your animals or something, be around something that's been sprayed. Now, one of the things that, that uh, this, it'll say it had, let's see if I can find it on here. It'll say something about it's trans. Actually, let's do this. Let me jump over to the SDS next. Let me just, let me just stop the share on this and I'll, I'll go straight to the SDS. I could be wrong, but this product reminds me of, of other products that 
you have to have a license, a pesticide license uh, to resell it. Uh, some of those, yeah, that's becoming more, that's kind of depends on municipality. Um, that some things, depending what the listing is, they may want you to have to have a, a pesticide license or something to be actually be able to uh, be a reseller of this product. This has been, I know Abbott's been around quite for, for quite some time. It's, it's basically active ingredient is going to be something called oh, avermectin. And people have heard of ivermectin because of all the craziness with COVID. Ivermectin and avermectin are, are different molecules, so I don't want people to confuse those. But some of the, uh, the this is from their, the safety data sheet. Now, they used to be called uh, material safety data sheet, and now the new term that everyone uses is SDS, SDS, so it's safety data sheet. They kind of changed that during COVID and over, around the world that way. So this has a skin corrosion irritant of category two. It has organ toxicity category one, which is the worst. So it has eye damage and a bunch of different uh, possibilities. That's why you have to really suit up uh, almost a hazmat suit is what you're supposed to do. I mean, to be honest with you, from a personal thing years ago, I've used this product and I'm sure I was not as safe as I was. I mean, that's kind of one of the reasons we brought our product to market was I like it because it doesn't have skin sensitivity, water supply issues, or, or organ toxicity or anything of that nature. But I've used this product before, so hopefully I didn't do any damage to myself in the, in the past. Uh, but th this is just something I want everybody to kind of review through. This is a combustible liquid. It's toxic if you swallow it, if you get in your mouth, causes skin irritation. It's uh, harmful if you contact with your skin, eye irritation, things like that. It may cause respiratory irritation. Um, and this is all just from the active ingredient is, is avermectin. Now, just to give you a little history, what is avermectin? avermectin look, at that. Is look at that. If you scroll all the way up, what sorry. else do you see? Skull and bones. Oh, yeah. Skull and bones. Oh, yeah. yeah the hazard respiratory symbols. issue, all the hazard symbols. I, yeah. I, I find these products and I ask Holt to review them based off the products I see still in the hydroponic stores. I literally, as I walk into a store, every time I need another video, I take a picture of the pet, the next pesticide I see because I go to another store every time. I send it to Holt and say, Holt, can you take a pic? Can you do a review on this product for me, please? And that's how we're, this is why we're reviewing this product is because this product is still a product you can walk into a local hydroponics store, purchase it, and they're still putting it onto their plants. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, it's, you know, the stores are trying to uh, survive in harder times now. But um, so what is the avermectin is the active ingredient in this product. Now, what avermectin is, I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. Um, this is uh, avermectin and this is from Wikipedia. Maybe I can zoom it in a little bit more so people can see it. So essentially, ivermectin is something that they, they took it out of uh, something in the soil and they've, they've kind of enhanced it from there. But it, what it's used in, now one of the things about ivermectin, even though it's toxic, they use it in a certain dose for worms on horses to kill worms. They, they have horses, I think, in real small doses, ingest it, a little bit of amount of it as a dewormer in horses. So I don't know about you, but I'm not sure I want dewormers on, on me. But uh, it's a here it is uh, the natural occurring compounds right here. This is this is what it comes from. Uh, Streptomyces avermectosus. It's a something in the soil, and that's that's kind of where they get it from. Just like if, if you've ever heard it, I know we'll do something on a product in the future that has spinosad A and B. Spinosad A and B are bacteria that are found in soil uh, naturally occurring, and then they enhance those. This is something natural occurring compounds generated, they, they ferment it and they make it up just, just like citric acid is a fermentation process to make it. So this is kind of interesting about this because it's been around for quite some time. It's just, I thought you guys might find that interesting on that side of, of what is avermectin. Now, one of the questions to me is we saw some the SDS about, oh, it's got this dangerous thing in it. Well, how dangerous is that? So something I, I found um, just from pulling it up, let me clip through here. Let's, let's see, whoops, sorry. So the, the, this is, the, let's just go to the page on how does ivermectin work, and then I'll tell you about toxicity and, and if it's human safe and things of that nature. What this, this is called translinear, and some people know the term systemic, which means it soaks in deep into the plant. Translinear just means that um, if something is a translinear product, it's going to go not a far away. It'll go like this goes into the leaves, but it doesn't uh, maybe go throughout the whole plant like a systemic thing like DDT goes throughout the whole plant or some or maybe that DDT, but other products they, when they soak in, they go everywhere. Translinear just means it's not going to go that far, but the idea is, you know, you're spraying the leaves. And so this is going to go and create a reservoir of the leaves. So 
I'll just read this and I've highlighted it so everybody can see if, if my, uh, my uh, language is not good enough. Uh, how Avid works, Avid penetrates the leaf's surface to a, a form a reservoir of active ingredient inside the leaf tissue. So right there, you're knowing this is going to leave something behind. Uh, I'm not a big fan of anything that leaves something behind. Now, that's why I believe these guys even say that this is for ornamental use. So on your ornamentals, maybe you're fine with leaving that behind. So it protects them. And, and I can understand the usage and why uh, someone would want to do that. So it says this reservoir that it leaves behind uh, provides a long lasting activity against damaging foliar feeding insects and mites. Avid provides control of labeled pests by direct contact and through ingestion. Uh, this translam, uh, I may be saying this wrong, but translaminar activity, that's what I mean where it doesn't, it does, it goes in the leaf, but it doesn't go maybe down the roots or something of the plant. Uh, Avid penetrates the pest nerve receptors. So essentially most of your chemical, and, and even though this is kind of made from some organic type materials, I still kind of in my head classified as the chemicals. So, cause you're traditionally your chemical products are going to either mess up the digestive, the reproductive or the nervous system. So this one actually penetrates the pest nerve receptors, paralysis sets in with hours and pests are no longer able to feed. So mess the nervous system up, makes them where they can't eat and then they die in two or three or four days. And it reminds me of other products I've used that I was like, it's supposed to be really good, but I would spray my plant and then, you know, something two, three, four or five days before you'd actually see the effects. And this must be why that it, it might take a little while where uh, products like, like uh, Organic Shield that I represent, you know, minutes to hours, you're going to notice something. And within three or four days, it's, it's pretty much gone and, and you don't have any, doesn't leave residue. So this, this is intentionally leaves a residue or leaves something in the, the plant uh, to kill the bugs that come and bite on the plant and suck it. And then they'll die a few days later if it doesn't, you know, if you don't hit them outright with it, um, it still leaves something behind for the, the bugs that come later. So that, that's a little bit about how it works. There was something I'd read that kind of scared me about it. Here it is. is uh, there it is. So right here it says, is Avermectin toxic to humans? Um, and I guess maybe because this is Google, maybe that's a, a common question. And let me, let me open that up. So it says ivermectins are a new pesticide in the world, a wide margin of safety. However, in severe cases of intoxication, cause coma, hypotension, acidosis, or even death, most patients um, were poisons in an attempt to commit suicide. So maybe someone was, was trying to drink this to die, but um, it kind of goes to that fear of, of buildup that if this builds up over time, what can it do to your body, you know, or what can it do, you know, if you're spraying it on something, then you're consuming it. Um, that's, that's always my, my concern is, is something getting sprayed on something and that you're consuming it and it builds up over time. It persists. Uh, that was the problem with the historical insecticide called DDT. DDT was a very effective, effective as a insecticide. However, it was not safe for humans because it wouldn't break down. And so it caused cancer and got in people's bodies and things like that. Uh, so that was kind of the challenge with that, but that, that's just something I thought people should, uh, should be aware of that, you know, if you're going to use this Avid product and I don't say you should or should not use it, that's up for your own choice. This is just to give you information. So, you know, information is power that you're aware of these type of things so that you can be safe. If you go, I love my Avid product. Great. Then make sure you're safety and you're using it correctly. And you're not getting in your eyes, you're not getting on your skin, you're not getting it on your dog. That's those are reasons why I would not use it, but that's just, you know, that's just me. What's your, what's your thoughts on this, Mark though? I mean, um, we we just finished shooting a video about trifecta me and you and mm -hmm. it makes me it's i'm just making a joke if, if i had to walk into a store and i had the option between av avid and trifecta i'd pick trifecta over this in the day well yeah <laughs> well, because because you're you know if you're growing something you're going to consume and i don't like trifecta okay <laughs> <I'm just saying. laughs> no i understand that but yeah if i was going to go one intense. or the other no, no, this is serious though. We are, and this isn't just starting now. This has been around for over 10 years. I mean, I remember yeah. Eagle 40, uh, Eagle 20. Eagle 20 being uh, a, they pulled like $10 million of inventory off the shelves here in Colorado a few years back. It just happened again, actually recently, yeah. uh, where it, the, it, the pesticide concentrated down and it's just, look, I mean, we, we have a pesticide right here with a skull and bones right there. You know, I'm with you, and, and I hate to crazy. admit this, but but there was a time years ago when it was first in the, in the cannabis space in Colorado first went medical. I'd worked for a um, a commercial grow, and this was before I had educated myself. I'm not like I'm some 
PhD scientist that knows everything. I've just really taken the time over the last nine, 10 years to just read everything I could and learn. What is this ingredient? What does that mean to me? How's that work? But we had used uh, Eagle 20, I remember, and it was a great mold killer and did some things. And so just because something is effective for the, the desired result doesn't always mean, and usually it doesn't mean that it's going to be safe um, for you to consume the plant or be around the plant. You know, mm-hmm. you can kill things with fire, but the fire will still burn you. <laughs> um, so, so it's just really that mentality of, of that I developed over the years before I, I developed Organic Shield out was um, just starting to study what's in the things we're using today. What's in this product that I'm about to apply on this plant that I might be smoking or I might be eating. Those are always just well, you know, my concerns. I tell people all the time, again, this isn't a, a promotion video for Organic Shield, but it is. No. It is, it still goes back every time we talk, every time we get into a new pesticide or a fungicide or herbicide. And then I, I start to go back and think about when the plant's injured or, or you're injured, for example, and you, let's say you have a respiratory issue and you go into the hospital, what's mm-hmm. the first thing they give you? Or one of the top two, three things they give you? Oxygen and yeah, they'll put you on and, oxygen. And, and IV probably. Yeah, and right? IV or something like that. Yeah, to get something in fluids in you. And that's one of the one things I absolutely love about Organic Shield. When it starts to break down, it breaks down to water, CO2, and sugar. Yep. You know, there's your IV, and the CO2 is the oxygen tank right there, right yep. at the, the surface of the leaves. And and I'm always thinking, like, okay, we have a pesticide, like we got to up our game toward pesticides and fungicides. They can't just be something that kills or takes care of the problem. It also has to be a help recover the plant back to its uh healthy state again you know if not that at least not cause new problems right or or at least that not cause new problems exactly like we have to really start taking up the game to it i and i every time we go over a new pesticide new fungicide i just like think holy shit you know it's like all these other products are just trying to solve a very specific problem but they're causing other problems like you said and they're not helping the plant recover they're just killing the problem or whatever. You know, I think, I think this is like a, a doctor saying or something about the you know, first rule, do no harm. <laughs> and, and that's sort of um, with organic show, that was sort of the mentality of, of let's do this. Does it solve the problem? Check that box. Yes. Does it do no harm? Check that box. Yes. And, and so some other of the products out there, they may be effective, but do they do any harm afterwards? Are they safe for the environment downstream? Do they, you know, you know, are they something I, I like the organic shield happens to have the components that, other the plants can use, you know, as it breaks down, they actually enhance the plant with the CO2 and things uh, being right there available. Um, it just, we're, we were very fortunate with that. It has those uh, nice results, but uh, yeah. And one of the, I think I've shared this with you in the past too. One of the, the, the things I do like about it under the, the code of federal regulations that uh, sucrose octanoate our active ingredient is exempt uh, tolerance exempt in and on all food commodities if it had residues, but it doesn't, it doesn't leave, it just doesn't hang around long enough to, to leave any rev- residues. But if it did, it's exempt from tolerance testing because it's that safe. Um, there's other types of being a, a sucrose ester or sugar ester. We're the only ones that manufacture on a commercial scale our particular uh, molecule. But under that heading of sugar esters, there's other ones out there. They're used in your food uh, for like chewing gum has sugar esters in it. Not ours, but not the one we use as insecticide, but it has other types of sugar esters than the same heading. And so is cosmetics and things. So you're already consuming not our particular molecule unless you were eating the plants in nature that we copied it from, but we're already consuming sugar esters. So it's, it's already in your environment anyway. So that it does not, so there's no concern about it doing harm. It's that's been true. around for quite some time. So that's just kind of something maybe my ego comes through, but I'm, I'm proud that we offer a product that does, that does have effectiveness. And it also, like you said, and I think you found from using it uh, from time to time that it actually made your plants grow better. But it also, the main thing for me was first, it does no harm. It's not going to hurt the environment and it's not going to hurt you. It gets on your skin. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to do any permanent damage. And to me, that was the kind of the baseline for developing something out that's going to have that level of safety and then the efficacy um, does it work or not? I kind of wanted to go that route first. What's safe? And then does it work? Some people go what works and then they worry about whether it's safe or not. But I kind of wanted to make sure it's environmentally safe, human safe, you know, plant, planet, pets, people, whatever. It, it's safe for all those type of things and even beneficial insects. It, it has, it's very safe around beneficials too. So, so that's also the other thing. And, and, you know, so I know some of these other products, they're going to, they're going to wipe out your beast, your bees too. We even have a bee 
usage on one of her labels to, to kill the varroa mite on, on honeybees at a low dose. So yeah, I, I appreciate that. Thanks for letting me kind of wax on about organic shield though, because I could talk about it for days. <laughs> no, it, it makes me want to get the CEO of the company from uh, Ovid. Uh, I mean, not Ovid, but uh, yeah. Avid, and see if he'll come on and tell us what he thought about when he they're formulating the product. Yeah, yeah. if there's something he, if, if, if I'd love to hear from him because it, you know I've just read through these things, do my little studies, and and make my conclusions, and 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 you know they're just my personal conclusions. And, and if I'm wrong, I'm always open to be corrected. And Sergenta is the company. Let me see if I can click back to the. Yeah, can we go? Yeah, let's go back to the kind of product and what's the, the price list and a few other things. Let's see. So Sergenta is the company, or Syngenta, I think, is the company that makes this. Now that they make a lot of different products. So whether you can get someone to come on from there, I don't know. So basically, I pulled down their information guide, and um, you know they even show roses in here. So they're not advertising this that you should use um, this on food. Your food crops, yeah. They don't they don't advertise that. They don't say that. Um, so you know, hats off to them for being you know straight up about it. I can pull up. Yeah, I can let me let me just pull up Avid uh, as a product on the website on a, on a page somewhere and just kind of see what pricing is according to to Google popping things up here. Hang on, let me make sure. Let me share that screen if I'm not already. So you're looking at pricing here now. So like yeah, this is now this is you know these are just it pulls these up randomly. Um, we can go to, they, they don't really sell it direct. So it's just, so if I pull up something, I'm going to be pulling up someone else's uh, pricing. You know, th- yeah. Their pricing sheet that they're, they're offering it on. So, but you can kind of see. But the, eight the ounces sizes. is a hundred bucks. Eight ounces is a hundred bucks. I wonder how yeah, much. Yeah, it's a hundred bucks or like 32 ounces. Too many. So, but now eight ounces. Now, one thing I will say with that is you're using a really low dose of this. You don't use a lot, which generally when there's something that you don't use a lot of, because in the organic space, you're tend that you're going to be using, you know, uh, an ounce to two ounces, depending on what it is. Just that's the nature of organics. Just like when you're using most organic nutrients and things like that, you might have to use a little bit more. Um, if you go to Chinese medicine and they want you to take, you know, it's all made from food, but you're taking two or three or four pills where if you're, you're using a chemical pill, you might use something small because they make them really powerful. So this is a very powerful substance and, so I, the, the usage rate on this is going to be really low. I think it's a half ounce or a quarter ounce per gallon or something really small like that. So you're not going to be using as much, but that tends to be the nature of uh, chemicals and uh, in our environment and, and pills. You know, the, if there's something that's like really, really small dose, it must be pretty powerful. Mm-hmm. And which also means, which is kind of scares me a little bit too. <laughs> oh, the skull and bones scares me. Yeah, well, skull and bones always scare. <laughs> this is true. It always scares me. But so, so your price range is, yeah, it's $100 for eight ounces. And eight ounces is a half pint. I think the main point, guys, uh, through uh, through going over the this one is that please just don't go into your local hydroponics store and purchase what's on their shelves if you're running into a problem. Just double check their material safety and data sheet. Make sure it's designed for food. Make sure it's designed for the types of in consumer products that products that we're creating in our industry. And just look for if they're telling you to wear protective equipment, make sure to use a proper protective equipment before using these things. Sure. It, it, can you see the screen now? Mm-hmm. Okay. So here, here's your here's your here's going to be your usage amounts. Just so so if people want to know. So for my control, see that like I said, it, a little goes a long way. It is expensive. But you're also, you know, this is something, you know, if someone said, hold, I'm going to use it no matter what, I would just say, well, then please use it on things that you're not going to eat or that your animal's not going to accidentally chew on or your kids aren't going to get too close to for a while. But so four ounces for it's a quarter gallon for for my control that makes 100 gallons. So it does go a long way when even though it's an expensive product for leaf miners, it's eight ounces per hundred gallons. And then white flies, you know, eight ounces per hundred gallons. And it kind of goes in a little detail that you can retreat every seven days uh, to get it under control. So it's, um, you know, like any chemical product out there, I grew up in um, what there was agricultural area and there was soybean field on one side, a corn field on one side. And, you know, they go out and spray everything. And back then, I'm sure they were using some type of chemical. So they, you know, in the field crop world, people were wanting to use one product, and because it costs money to run the the machinery out there, they would want something that was pretty toxic and pretty strong because they would only have to because it cost them every time they had to spray a big field, and that was kind of uh, why I think some of these 
chemicals over the years have been really developed to be very, very concentrated. And so a little bit goes a long way because, you know, four ounces a gallon, that's, you know, that's, uh, that goes a long way. (laughs) Yeah. It's not, it's not cheap to hire a helicopter to fly over your, fly over your acre. Yeah. Just raise something. Yeah, exactly. But so in, in down here, just, you know, it says uh, rain fast with an hour's application. And so we talked about, you know, uh, the outdoor flexibility of that. But the idea behind that is that it soaks in the plant fairly rapidly and leaves a reservoir in there. So we talked about the, the translineration of the of the product going in. It says it doesn't leave any residue on the plants, I guess, because it soaks in. And I remember reading something in the literature about how um, when it's exposed to air for a certain amount of time, it's going to evaporate, but it soaks in. So it breaks down rapidly. It was what's sunlight. It breaks down rapidly in sunlight, I guess, is why it's good for them, uh, for whoever selling it, that it actually soaks in and leaves something behind. But um, it contains point. You know, 15.15 pounds of abernectin per gallon, I, I guess, is is the way they, they make it. But um, it's, you know, it's something it even says using resistance management program rotation because it's one of kind of chemistry mode action. So some of these products, if you read deep enough, they might say, you know, what's uh, rotate this. What's abermectin? What is abermectin? Oh, abermectin is the one is, is, is abermectin is what, is what this is, abermectin. It's the same thing. Oh, it's the same thing, just different. Because this one's abermectum, A, B, A. Right there. Yeah, yeah. Let me just do a little Google search real fast. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it says abermectin is a miticide. And it's right here again. It's widely used as exide. See, it's abermectin, member of the abermectin family, natural mm-hmm. fermentation product. This soil dwelling, like we're, like I pulled up here on. Um, Got it. Um, so it's, they're, they're basically one of the same thing. And this is where is abermectin harmful to humans, where I was showing you that earlier, the toxicity mm-hmm. report. Yeah. Good cause so, vomiting, nausea. Yeah. Alter consciousness. Yeah, yeah. It says it's it's rare. And, and you know, obviously it says it's rare, but they describe a case of acute poisoning. Um, a woman who had nausea, vomiting, altered consciousness. So they either they either consume too much. I don't know if they drank it intentionally or whatever, but they you know, definitely it's not something you want to get a lot on you or or you know, rub on your skin or have exposure to it for any length of time. If you know something also always makes me kind of scared is okay if this goes into the plant if it readily like this is readily absorbed into the plant well then does that mean it's readily absorbed on my skin um so that's exactly what i was thinking actually with the even if it's oriental that's exactly what i was thinking in the beginning of the conversation is what do people do with orientals i mean immediately they're smelling the smelling the plant right so if they're if it's in the plant oh the ornamentals yeah uh, and the the plants are are releasing their terpenes are they breathing in these chemicals is what I well, was thinking. Well, and the same thing, you know, I know we talked about the trifactor earlier. Um, you know, it has a little bit of a, skin, a potential skin irritant in it. And that's probably from one of the ingredients there. Cause you know, clove oil or something can burn your cinnamon oil, but mm-hmm. also does it go in your, you know, into your uh, skin as the oils oils don't readily transfer across your skin as well as some things, but they still are you soaking it in. That's why, you know, the other thing I do like about our product is that we're skin safe um, mm-hmm. and, and finding a product that's also skin safe is, is becoming harder and harder to do, but it's just a nice seed to have. So, so yeah, I, I worry about anything like that. If it's something's going to soak in the plant, is it going to soak in onto me <laughs> or soak oh. it into my dog or my cat or my ch- child or something like that if they rub up against it? Thank you so much for doing the groundwork to just share more about uh, these pesticides and fungicides on the market. And, that, and just going on the website and reading it to us, because again, there's a lot of big words that I don't understand. It takes me a lot of time to just google each of these words and it's nice to be able to kind of have someone that has went through the process to you've already researched these words you know what they are you know what they mean and it allows me to kind of just listen so i can kind of just digest the information versus having to kind of you know read it look it up digest it sit down what does this mean now i'm able to just listen and observe and realize oh this is off their website and you're and you're just reading it to me and it allows me to just listen to it a little bit more easier. So thank well, you. Well, I'm happy to do that. And, and I really, you know, there may be things that I misread or I get wrong. So I just want to be honest about being a human here, but I, what I really, what I like doing this is because I want to encourage um, your viewership and anybody who happens to catch this 
to do the same thing as I've done. If you're going to use it, I mean, I'm not saying study every product out there, but if there's a product that you've landed on and you said, hey, I'm going to use this product before you use it, before you buy it, before you open the bottle, please go do your research. You know, the, with the, the way the web is today with Google or whatever type of search engine you like, you can find this information out there. And, you know, we're, we're a regulated uh, society. So, so the information is there. They have to register this, whether, whether even if it's the fit for 25, be exempt products, they still have to have an SDS. They still have to have these things out there. So the information is there. It's not that hard to find. It just takes the time to focus and, and read it. And if you don't quite understand a verbiage or word, just you know, search and see what that is. But uh, I, I just really want to encourage people to do their own research into what they're putting in their plants because they're putting their plants in their bodies. And so, you know, what you, you are, what you eat, as grandma used to tell us when we were little kids. So if you're eating toxic stuff, you're going to eventually be, have toxic you know, things in your body. And that's just something that I, I just think is unacceptable um, with the way science is today. We should be able to do things in a more natural, organic way, uh, using nature to control nature. Um, you know, obviously I represent Organic Shield and one of our, that's one of our products. It's a copy of a sugar ester that already exists on several plants in nature. And we've just uh, developed a way to make it on a commercial scale so that in a more concentrated fashion so that people can use it and get the same benefits, but not only the benefits, the safety. And I guess safety to me is a benefit. Efficacy is important that it needs to work. And obviously our product works, but uh, the safety level um, and the environmental safety level, not just the human safety, the environmental, animal safety, planet safe, water safe, crustacean safe, all those type of things. Those are what I'm proud about. I love that it works, but that I can say my product works and that it has those safety things. And I'm, I'm hoping that there'll be more and more products like ours that will come out uh, as time goes on. And as the demand from, um, you know, just the public, it, you know, there's a bigger groundswell. Now we have, everybody's known about our gangs for a while, but it's becoming more and more prevalent. Sometimes it's a little more expensive to use organics. Uh, we're priced right there with everybody else. Sometimes we're lower, but we're right there within a percentage of of, uh, of any of the competitive products. But uh, I'm hoping that there's a, a more groundswell as time goes on that we'll see more products like Organic Shield that are, are safe for the environment, uh, not only effective, but safe for the environment, safe for people. So guys, gals, please leave a comment down below. Please, if there's a pesticide or fungicide or herbicide that you want reviewed, or if there's anything we said that wasn't correct, please leave a comment below so that we can just bring these things to the surface. Yep. Uh, remember to like, share, and subscribe, and have a great grow, everyone. Thanks again, Holt, for coming on Thanks. the channel. Absolutely. So obviously, some of those key combinations of things that he was talking about was watering consistently and then using trace minerals and obviously the importance of coenzymes and coenzymes 